We give thanks and praise to God for the opportunity given to us to assemble before him. Let me welcome all of you, especially our brothers and sisters worshiping online. We welcome you to Grossly Methodist Church. And we pray that our service will be a blessing to all of us. Let us bow our heads as we go to God in prayer. Father, we acknowledge you to be our God. We give you thanks, we give you praise for your goodness and mercies upon our lives. If by your grace today we are alive, it is not any good that we have done, that we deserve to live. It is just by your grace. So we want to thank you, gracious Lord. We thank you for family, friends. We thank you for our loved ones. We bless your name, O oh God, for our neighbors, the leaders of our nation, and the peace we are enjoying. Even in the midst of challenges that confront us, we thank you, gracious Lord, for the opportunity to be in your presence. We pray as O oh God, your word is about to come to us. We seek wisdom. Knowledge, understanding of God, because you are the source of wisdom. So, Lord, we humble ourselves before you. Let's speak to us. So, Lord, as I stand before your people, you know, Lord, I cannot do it without you. Therefore, Lord, I ask you to talk to me so that I will be able to talk to your people. We pray for all our listeners and viewers on social media. We pray for your blessings upon each one of them. Whatever trial, challenge that confront anyone, we ask you, gracious Lord, even as your word is coming, let the power in your word speak to them and release and liberate them from every suffering may confront them, O oh God. So, gracious Lord, we are in your hands. Have your own way. And let your will be done in our worship. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, our test for meditation is from Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Matthew 15, 28. And it reads, Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Let me read again. If you have your Bible, you can underline the words. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Today, our theme for reflection Problems in life should lead us towards God, not away from him. Problems in life should lead us towards God and not away from him. And you know, life is a series of problem-solving opportunities. There are unexpected crises we meet each day in our lives. The problems we face will either defeat us or develop us, depending on how we react to the situation. And you know, most people fail to see how God wants to use problems for good in their lives. The Bible says God uses all things together for our good. But sometimes when we are confronted with problems, we focus too much on the problem instead of asking God, God, what are you teaching me in this situation that I find myself? We brood over the challenge and the trouble we find ourselves. Sometimes some people, they react unwisely and resent problems rather than pausing to consider what benefits that will bring to them. So anytime you are confronted with challenge, sit down and reflect. And ask God, God, what are you teaching me 
from this situation because God uses all things to work together for our good. So my brothers and sisters, as we journey through life, it is important for us to understand that there will be a lot of problems and trials in life, whether we like it or not. There will be certain things that will restrain us from reaching our goal and potentials in life. Sometimes we may face hardship that can weaken our faith as believers. That can distract us from reaching our goals and dreams in life. Sometimes our health will fail us. Our relationship will get broken beyond repairs. The bills will pile up that we will not know how to pay. Family matters getting worse. Your neighbors will not talk to you. These are some of the problems that we will encounter in life. But whatever happens, you need to turn to God. Do not fight because you cannot win without God. Therefore, we need to look up to God. So in times like this, it is important for us to turn to God. Your problems, whatever confronts you, just turn to God. Because God knows best and he knows what he is doing. It is unwise to turn away from God. There are some people when challenges confront them, then they turn away from God. They think they can solve it on their own. But I want to tell you that, my brothers and sisters, if we turn away from God, where else will we go? Where else? So in our text for this morning, we notice this Canaanite woman who overcame her problem by turning to God in her desperation. This Canaanite woman trusted the redemptive grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In times of her trouble, this woman in our test, we are told her daughter was sick, very sick. She was tormented by a demon. And you know, a demon is an evil spirit or evil powers, spiritual force working against your life. So this daughter was going through demonic oppression. And when demons takes control over your life, it destroys your life. We can cite example from Mark chapter 4, where this man was possessed by thousands of demons and drove him into a cemetery to live there. So when demons invade in your life, it brings a lot of crisis. So this woman's daughter was sick, being attacked by a demon. According to verse 22, just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. My daughter is tormented by a demon. So you see, she came to Jesus seeking a cure for her daughter. And you know, the woman was not a Jew. She is a foreigner, a pagan. The woman asked Jesus for mercy. She wanted her daughter to be healed. And you know, by the customs and the practices at the time, she should not dare even to approach Jesus because she was a foreigner, a pagan, coming to Jesus for mercy. And again, culturally, she has no right to expect anything from Jesus. In addition to her physical circumstances, she experienced a series of obstacles that threatened to discourage her even more. We could see firstly, according to our test, Jesus refused to listen to her. And that was a problem, that was a, a barrier for this woman. And again, the disciples also falsely assumed that because Jesus was silent, the disciples threatened her, go away. Lord, do not listen to her. My brothers and sisters, the disciples came to Jesus and begged him to send this woman away. 
This woman has become a nuisance to us. Send her away. She was getting on our nerves. So Lord asked her to go because the woman was begging. So if you look at verse 23, 24, it put it this way. But he did not answer her. Jesus did not answer the woman. And his disciples came and argued him, urged him, sorry, saying, send her away. For she keeps shouting after us. Verse 24, Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. My brother says, Jesus, and again, if you look at the text, one problem that this woman encountered was Jesus referred to her as a dog. Verse 26, Jesus answered, it is not fair to take children's food and throw it to the dogs. So my question is, how would you have reacted if Jesus would have referred to you as a dog? You need the help and you go to somebody and the person say, you dog, get away from me. How would you have reacted? And why would Jesus, somebody coming for help, referring to that person as a dog? My brothers and sisters, the term dog used by Jesus referred to this woman is a metaphor in the Jewish setting that they used to refer to Gentiles, those who are not Jews. They refer to them as dogs. So for Jesus to use that term, he was using the Jewish context of how they describe the Gentiles. So the term dog refers to the fact that these people are unworthy. They are low class. And therefore they do not deserve the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, I was sent to the lost people of Israel. So verse 28, then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed. So today I ask the question, who are like this woman in our society today? Who are like this woman in our society today? And you could see that this woman in our test, for me, she represents the marginalized in our society. She represents people who are denied an equal opportunity in our society. She represents people who are struggling to care for their children, to care for their family, to care for their parents. And often they do not have the means to do so as they would like. My brothers and sisters, this woman represents parents today who cannot get good health, good health care for their children. She represents those who are left out because of their national or ethnic background. This woman reminds us of those of us who are intimidated by religious, political, and economic authority. She represents those that the national system and policies discriminate against them. Those that our politicians take advantage of them because they are weak and feeble in a society. So with this background, what lesson can we learn from this woman? My brothers and sisters, today this woman teaches us about turning our problems to God in faith. You see, the politician will fail. Your community rep will fail, but Jesus never fails. And therefore, when we have any problem, the best way to turn to is God. And that is what this woman is teaching us. So if you read verse 28, then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. 
and her daughter was healed instantly. My brothers and sisters, this woman demonstrates remarkable faith. She encountered so many challenges, but she did not give up. She turned her problems to Jesus. Even when Jesus first turned her away, she pursued her goal with faith and determination until her daughter was healed. Her faith was excellent in quality and it was constant and steady. This woman didn't seem to care about what others would think about her. She had shown herself to trust in Jesus without changing from the beginning to the end. She is entrusting the destiny of her daughter to the man who stands before her. And her desire for her daughter's salvation propels her to pursue him, to seek him tirelessly until she obtains what she believes she can provide for her daughter. My brothers and sisters, this woman acknowledged Jesus as Lord, even when it meant that her daughter seems to be disregarded. And she herself was called a dog. She did not mind. One thing she was seeking for, that her daughter would be healed. She believed that Jesus had the ability to heal her daughter of the demons. So today, like this Canaanite woman, in times of trouble, never hesitate turning your problems over to God. It is perfect opportunity for him to show you who he is, what he can do for you, and how much he loves you. My brothers and sisters, faith is needed for God to intervene. So turning to God gives us a better perspective, a means of focus on a higher truth. Turning to God, give us direction. God will show you the way to go. Sometimes we try to find our own way to solve our own problems, but we fail. We fail, then we turn to God. Why don't you turn to God first? So that God will give you the direction, the way you should go. Turning to God gives us confidence. Turning to God gives us true success. When we turn our problems to God, God is able to handle because he has the power to do so. So my brothers and sisters, in times of problems, remember this Canaanite woman. Turn your problems to God. Don't sit on it. The second lesson that we can learn from this test is that this woman teaches us to press on in the midst of our trials. In other words, don't stop seeking the face of God. You see, the action of the disciples could have caused this woman to be discouraged because the disciples didn't want this woman to get to Jesus. But this woman pressed on. Even Jesus' approach to her would have caused her to turn away from God. But this woman persisted. She pressed on until her daughter was healed. So I want to encourage you to press on. Irrespective of the barriers, irrespective of the trials, press on. My brother, my sister, press on. Move on. Do not look at the problems, the hindrances. Just press on. So if you look at verse 23, 24 again, but he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lordship of house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. So you could see the hindrances, the barriers, the hurdles. But this woman pressed on. So my brothers and sisters, 
to the extent that Jesus referred to her as a dog. But the woman pressed on. So I want to encourage you today, no matter what you face, press on. Today I want to encourage you, no matter what comes on your way, just press on. Don't give up. Don't give in at all. Just press on. Maybe as I'm speaking today, you are going through problems upon problems like this Canaanite woman. I encourage you to press on. I know there is problem at home. Press on. There is problem at your workplace. Your co-workers, they but talk behind you. Press on. Your partner does not love you anymore, but pretend. Do not give up. Press on. Problems in your family. Press on. Don't give up at all. When life keeps getting on top of you, I encourage you to press on. When bills are piling up and no money to pay, just press on. Don't give up. Don't lose hope at all. Be persistent in everything that you do. So my brothers and sisters, God is never deaf. God does not ignore his children. God answers us in his wisdom and gives us what we need. So any time that you are discouraged, remember this woman. Press on, sister. Press on, brother. And you see the power of God at work. And finally, my brothers and sisters, success in life comes when you simply refuse to give up. This is the third lesson that this woman teaches us. That success in life comes when you simply refuse to give up. So I want to encourage you, refuse to give up. Refuse to give up. So today, any time you encounter any trouble, refuse to give up. Verse 28 again. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. You see, when life is tough, giving up always seems to be the easiest option. Like this woman, the only valid excuse to give up is that you are dead. It is only the dead people who gives up. So once you are alive, never give up. Refuse to give up. Your health will challenge you, but don't give up. Your finances, don't give up at all. Your dreams, don't give up. Refuse to give up. Because if this woman had given up, the daughter wouldn't have been healed. Whilst there is life, there is always hope. Whilst there is a way, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. So today, like this woman, don't sell yourself Short and don't let anybody bring you down. Don't let anything be a hindrance in your life. If you can dream it, you can do it. And your dreams and your goals are worth pursuing. There have been millions of dreamers before you. And if they had given up, the world would not have been the same. So I want to encourage our young people in the nation and also in the church, never give up on your dreams. Never give up on your dreams, young people. Continue to hold on to your dreams. Hold fast to your dreams. For without them, life 
is broken wing that cannot fry. Don't let anything stop you from your goal. True failure isn't when you miss the mark, but it is when you give up. So, young people, I want to encourage you that you have the potential. You can make it. Look at this woman in our passage. It got to a time that she was so discouraged, but she pressed on and she refused to give up. You are capable. And quitting is only for the weak minds. This woman would do anything to get help from Jesus. She begged Jesus for help. She ignored the disciples' intimidation. So do not allow anything to intimidate you. Move on. Press on to the goal. Most of us tend to hold on to our pride. In times of troubles, we think we can handle it on our own. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we work hard to find our own solutions. But try as we might, only one solution satisfies. That is Jesus the Christ. Today there are many challenges we face in life. We need to turn our problems to God. For some people, it might be their problems, their family issues. You cannot solve it. Why don't you give it to God? I have said some time ago that if you can solve it, you would have solved it already. So why don't you turn to God? So today, no matter what you are going through, I want to encourage you that problems in life should lead us towards God, not away from God. When you go through hard times, turn to God's word. Press on. Don't stop seeking the face of God. Refuse to give up in times of problem. Jesus blesses faith that is steadfastly focused on him. It is my prayer today that we will always look up to this woman. Her example of perseverance and persistence when any trouble come on our way. Refuse to give up. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us bow heads as we go to God in prayer. What has become a hindrance in your life? What are the barriers in your life? Take it to God in prayer. Do thy friend despise forsake thee? Take it to God in prayer. I don't know what you are going through today. I don't know the problems that confront you. But know that when you turn your problems to God, in fact, Jesus said, come unto me. All those who are heavy laden, come unto me. And I will give you rest. Our rest is in Jesus. He is our perfect rest. Maybe you are tired in life. Things are not going. You have tried your best. Today, I want to encourage you to trust Jesus and see. Turn your troubles to him and see the outcome. He never fails. He has never failed. And he will never fail you. And so Lord we thank you. For your word. That has come to us. Encouraging us. That in times of trouble. We must turn to you. Rather than turning away from you. I pray for your people today oh God. Whatever trouble, challenge. Problems that confront them. I ask to God. Have mercy upon your people, O oh God. That Lord, every load that we are carrying, we turn everything to you. We do not have the strength. We do not have the ability. But you have it. You can shoulder our troubles. So those who are in pain, those who have been diagnosed, with any kind of illness. Those who are facing family issues. 
those going through financial crisis, we lift such people in your hands. We pray, oh God, your word say we should turn to you in our troubles. So this morning I stand on behalf of your people, oh God, and bring all these laws, oh God, unto you, oh God. And we ask you to fix us, oh God. Fix us, oh God, like you did for this woman, a Canaanite woman. We are your children. So Lord, we come to you. Take our Lord and set us free. The name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.